You forgot your accordion. You're only nine tenths of the nine without it. No, you can't leave it. It's the perfect accompaniment to your shrill voice. Your little boyfriend will never get to fully appreciate the thrill of one of your deceitful whore polkas. This is not a musical instrument. It's a crowd dispersal device, a social enema. You're lucky I didn't leave you. Wait. Wait. Wait! Hold on. Can we talk about this? Inside? I mean, don't you think we owe it to each other? Listen, okay, I just wanted to ask you how you were gonna channel Satan to expose all my faults. I mean, come on, how are you gonna do that, huh? Without your... God damned accordion. Smart water? Help your finances, Mason. An inheritance. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed if someone in my family drops dead soon. You need some kind of a money plan. Now forgive me if I find it difficult to take financial advice from a woman who until recently thought that a 401k was a really long fun run. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have a retirement plan. You're just lucky I thought you were getting fat. You know what would really help my retirement fund? Being able to work, uninterrupted. So why don't you leave my finances alone for a while and let me write this jingle. Has anyone ever told you you're hostile towards women? I'm not hostile towards women. It's okay, you won't be for long. I'm not now. I find it difficult to take financial advice from a woman. You felt the need to point out that I'm a woman, and not in a strictly informative sense because I have mannish hands. You do realize that as my agent, it's in your best interest that you let me work? I mean, isn't that why you instigated stupid career time every afternoon so that I could work on my career without distraction? Neither of us will have a career if I can't write jingles. I can't write jingles if I can't focus. I am a professional. I need focus. I crave focus. Jennifer! Hi, how are you? Can I get you anything? A cocktail or something? I just came over here to talk to Ashley. Oh. Well, Ashley's not here, but... Uh... I'm in here. Hmm. Damn it, Ashley. What the hell? Don't take your hostility out on Ashley. I'm not hostile towards women. And wouldn't you be a little hostile if your friend was hanging out in your kitchen without your knowledge? Mason, I lived in a garage for two years. I was lucky if I didn't get run over in my sleep. And yet you expect me to take career advice from you. It was a big garage. I went over to your apartment, but you weren't there. I thought I was hungry, but I might just be bored. I know I'm hungry. You don't have food at home either? I haven't been to the grocery store in like five years. Do you think Mason will mind if I grab a snack? I'm starving. Mason's not really the snack type. You sure? Because he should sign up for a 401k. Oh, there was a reason I wanted to talk to you. Guess what I saw on my way back from the hardware store? I told you that pothole doesn't look like the Virgin Mary. That's not what I'm talking about. But last week, my pinky toe ached, and this week it doesn't. I'm just saying. Look at this. A vegan restaurant? Someone got herself all citified. No, not that. This. Mason jarred? I'm gonna make a home canning joke here, but I'm drawing a blank. Oh, no, I'm hungry for jam. 
It's a one-person show. Doesn't that cartoon look like Mason? I don't know. This guy looks all pale and constipated. It's uncanny. Oh, talk about a canned ham. I think Mason's performing a one-person show. In his living room? At the Elephant Theater in Hollywood. All the information's there on the flyer. Except for the parking. That's not possible. It is. They never tell you about parking because there is no parking. What's wrong with this scenario? Well, strangers make Mason hostile. And oh yeah, he never leaves his apartment. Lou has been kicking us out of here every afternoon for the past two weeks. Maybe she's taking him to a theater or something to do a show. About how he can't leave his house? How would she do that? Some sort of agoraphobic underground railroad? Lou does not strike me as the Harriet Tubman type. No. Well, maybe. I don't know. I need a snack. Don't waste your time. Two things I know about Mason. He wouldn't do theater, and he never has good snacks. I need to start turning around more. What about your career? Have you considered that this afternoon I may have more immediate needs? More than you know. Oh, I'm just saying that Jennifer is here, and... And what? And she has snacks. Oh, a lot of snacks, but that's it, nothing else. These aren't for you, and you two need to go. We have to go. Yes, it is the afternoon after all. Nothing escapes you, Jennifer. If you're hiding something from me, it's okay to just tell me. What? Hiding? What? Tell you? What? No one's hiding anything, especially nothing that's about to start soon that you two can't be a party to or eat the snacks of their in. Oh! No, it's okay. You guys need to go. There's nothing to be afraid of. They're leaving. My name is Lou. See? I have mannish hands. Mannish. This one's skittish. Oh, Mason, it's gonna be a hot time in the old town tonight. <laughs> Street musician? My wife left me. The accordion is an acquired taste. Listen, buddy. Guy. Dude, does something feel different out here to you? Everything seems pretty normal to me. Hey, same people got places to be. So what's your hurry? Freaks. Yep, normal. Something's not right. My skin is too tight. My face is on fire. Is it cold out here? I don't feel safe. You're safe. I feel unsafe. Maybe you should feel unsafe on the sidewalk. It's okay. Don't be afraid. See, I have mannish hands. Mannish. Would you knock it off? Who is this guy? He's your guest, so try to be hospitable. There are snacks on the table. I think he's afraid of women. Maybe he's just afraid of you. Why would he be? Eat up, dude! Lou, what's going on? Your problem is you feel emasculated. Well, today I'm going to fix that. I don't know what you've got planned, but I don't feel emasculated. I pee standing up and everything. That doesn't make you a man, trust me. You never do anything for yourself. I do everything for myself. Hello, Mr. Mason. Even Sir Hillary had Sherpas. What are you doing? I'm just trying to figure out how she's getting him out of here. And into Narnia? There's no such thing as an agoraphobic underground railroad. I know that. I'm just so hungry. I'm still not convinced that this is Mason. And I'm pretty convinced that it is. That's not saying much. Uh, what? I'm just saying. You're pretty easy to convince. Name one thing. Pothole Virgin Mary. Do you want to see my toe? That pothole cured my gout. Is Mason home? No. When will he be back? Yes, he's home. Oh, I'm gonna get some food. You want anything? Yes! 
You're gonna have to eat from your own fridge today, guy. I turned my fridge into an aquarium three years ago. Lou just kicked us out. Why? Stealing? What? Because she's got Mason doing a one-man show in Hollywood. Mason wouldn't do theater without telling me. But he'd keep it from us? Well, I've known him longer. We met him on the same day. Technically, yes. He kept it from all of us. He's putting out snacks and inviting terrified strangers into his apartment. And he's putting out snacks. Mason would definitely tell me if there were strangers in his apartment. I'm first on his emergency phone tree. I'd say it's the sorriest pieces of crap I've ever seen. Excuse me? Well, then you need to go for a higher grade fertilizer. Uh, apartment three? Speaking of crap, that second kid has got to go. Yeah, he has no stage presence. I know talent, my friend. See? Strangers. And I think that guy was a talent scout. Or a gardener. I'll see what's going on. Lou won't let you in there. Yes, she will. Lou would let Guy in anywhere. You're right. But I should probably see what's going on anyway. Bring me some Funyuns! I do know talent. Yeah, there hasn't been a good winner since Kelly Clarkson. You know Kelly Clarkson? What? When Kate was Mason's manager, she never kicked us out of his apartment. Maybe Kate wasn't a very good manager. Where are you going? To a restaurant. Caught on my ass. Can't we do that here? You didn't invite me to this party. Because this isn't a party. Mr. Mason, are we allowed to eat these Funyuns? <gasps> Funyuns. They're for Jennifer. Speaking of Jennifer, does she know that I like her? Did any of you tell her? Because I can handle my own life, thank you. If that were the case, this wouldn't be necessary. I'm going straight to the source of Mason's problem. Uh, see, I knew this had something to do with my agoraphobia. My agoraphobia isn't an issue. Maybe Mason's agoraphobia was misdiagnosed. Why don't you go outside? What? Nope. Mason is hostile towards women. Would you stop saying that? I'm not hostile towards women. I may have, at one time, had a little hostility towards one woman, my ex-wife, but that was a long time ago. I'm over that. Besides, it's been five years since I even heard from that bitch. Funny you should mention your ex-wife. Knock, knock. Well, that's not who I was expecting. Me either. Sorry I'm late. Mason, I'm Doug. Nice to finally meet you. We can get started right away. BTW, I like that shirt. Okay, man, let's get this show on the road. For you, I would like everyone to welcome Mason to our Divorced Men Support Group. Welcome, welcome Mason. Mason. Vegan? Look, I'm not judging you here, Jennifer, but I don't think I could get hungry enough to eat this stuff. I had to check this place out. It's my way of helping my parents' turkey farm. See what the enemy is up to. See how they're marketing their fake meat. It starts with tofurkey and ends in tragedy. Okay. So this fake turkey, it's not flavored with turkey, is it? No, it's flavored with millet. Millet! Is that as tasty as it sounds? It's turkey. And why are you vegans always trying to make stuff taste like meat anyway? Self-loathing? We're against the slaughter of living creatures, not their flavors. You all secretly love meat, don't you? We only replicate meat to draw others to our lifestyle. So you're just philosophically dishonest. Jennifer, look at this. It is him. I was right, Mason's doing a one-man show. It has to be a coincidence. Looking for someone else to heckle? What do you know about the show? It's popular, people seem to like it. Really? And not just because they're delirious from a lack of protein? He's a good customer, comes in here all the time. What does he look like? He looks like that. Well, that's helpful. What's he like? Antsy, complains, somewhat antisocial. Honestly, a little like her, but likable. I'm likable? I'm just starving! Nice try. Come on, Jennifer. I have to see this for myself. Support turkeys by eating them! Freaking activists. I said you can't get it to heaven. 
You're deceptively heavy. Well, I'm still carrying some holiday weight. Uh, from which holiday? It's July 3rd. You've obviously never celebrated Hong Kong Special Administrative Region Establishment Day. Has anyone? I don't mean to rush you, but could you hurry? Is that my neighbor? I, I don't know. I just met him, and I don't know who you are. He's having some kind of panic attack. I'm dying. I've never met him either. I just live two doors down. I'm Ashley. How did you get into my apartment? <sighs> Guy. You know, it's amazing how we as people can live so close and yet pretend as if our neighbors don't even exist. My arms feel heavy. It's sad, really. I smell burnt toast. His wife just left him. Oh, that's a good thing for sure. They argue all the time. At least my Friday nights will be quiet from now on. Uh, that sounds sad. For me. Anyway, it wasn't healthy. Help me get him inside. Oh. Um. You know... Maybe we should just let him chill out here for a bit. <sighs> what? So that he can see that his anxiety attack is nothing serious. Do you think that's best? I don't. Do you know how they get babies to swim? They blow in their face so they'll hold their breath, and then they just dunk them underwater. So that's why they did that. Okay. <sighs> see? He's fine. Wheatgrass juice. I'm not in the valley anymore. I'm trying to eat healthier and embrace the whole West LA thing. This time I'm sticking to it. Again, I'd like to apologize for being late. My Men With Masculinity Issues brunch ran long. You want to reduce 12 men to quivering piles of tears? Run out of marmalade. <laughs> Oh, you're serious. I'm sorry. This meeting is for divorced men only. Why don't you just wait in Mason's bedroom? Uh, I am divorced. Yeah, I'm totally divorced from my ex-wife. You're not divorced, guy. Uh, it was a long time ago. We met in our college civics class. She wanted to learn how to fix her Honda. We were in love. We got married. Eventually, she realized her error and enrolled in an auto mechanics class. She fixed her car, and I never saw her again. Really? What was her name? Reality? Marie... something. You were divorced from reality? I'd say. Whatever. He's gonna take my place. This is for oh. your own good. Oh, you really do have mannish hands. Lucky. Excuse me, Doug. Yes, Ira. I'd like to be the first to share this week. Okay, so I took the advice you gave me. I got the picture of my ex-wife pinned to the doll, but it deflated before I could make love to it. Okay, Ira. One, I never told you to do that. Two, it's not healthy behavior. And three, that's super icky. He's a freaking pervert. Well, I don't care if he is a United States Senator. That's remarkably coincidental. Why don't we take a five minute break? We just got started. Besides, I call the breaks. You shouldn't be afraid to work out some of your issues. I hear that you have a real hostility towards women. Well, I'm afraid you've been misinformed. Lou, would you please join me in the kitchen? Ooh, do you need a chaperone? I'm not hostile towards women. Oh no, I just like to watch. I also hear that there's a certain building superintendent you've been smitten with for a long time now. You've never told her how you feel, right? That's not hostility, that's a fear of rejection, which is a completely separate issue. You should tell her how you feel before someone else gets her. Is she cute? I can handle this on my own. Well then give her a flea dip, someone will adopt her. Yeah, you shouldn't be afraid to ask Jennifer out, Mr. Mason. She was nothing but sweet on our date. Five minute break. Mason! Help yourselves to the snacks. Snacks are not to be eaten until after. This is a breach of decorum. <sighs> I told you there's no parking. When someone invites me to a play now, I say sure, I'll go. After you drive around my block 40 times, it only seems fair. And this is my car, I should drive it. You really do act a lot like Mason when you're hungry. <sighs> I have a granola bar in the glove compartment. If I don't eat it soon, I'll get really obnoxious. You mean it gets more interesting than this? Two Yom Kippur's ago, I accidentally started a small riot. You're Jewish? No, but you never know, right? It had a bug on it. You know what bothers me the most about Mason doing a one-man show? He's been lying to us. Oh look, a parking spot. A 
I'll eat the bug. I don't care. Come on, we have to go to the theater. I'm just not comfortable with the feeling that Mason's been hiding something from me. Never felt that way until now. Sometimes I envy you, Jennifer. Lou, would you just get rid of them? These strangers can't help me, they don't know me. Mr. Mason, do you have any Diet Pepsi? We deliver about a case a week. Yeah, I know, I just wanted to be polite. It's in the fridge. Okay, so he's not a total stranger. I remember the day you found out your last agent lost all your money. Oh, uh, what a day that was. I never suggested that you were a stranger. What? Okay, I'll make you a deal. You get rid of these people? I think Guy's divorce has led to a fear of abandonment. Well, that's not a deal. I know, but I didn't think you'd listen to me otherwise. I thought you were supposed to be helping me. Selfish dick. Hey, well, we called him that because Richard only ever thought of himself. Tell the group how you felt the day your wife left you. Excuse me, but I run this group. Uh, relieved, probably? I don't remember that day very well. It obviously wasn't very important. And Doug is right. It's his group. Thank you, Mason. Of course. Lou always has good ideas. I do. But you're not a man. Pots and kettles, Doug. Pots and kettles. The day your wife left was interesting. You almost got killed. I helped get Mason back into his apartment. They don't really need to know that. We do, if you want to make any progress. But we should all really move back into- When my marriage broke up, I felt like a total failure. I cried for three weeks. Really? Well, I was 14. Hormones, you know. I stayed home from school for a month. Men are allowed to cry. But we should all really move back After into- After my wife left, I tried to have sex with a balloon. We know. See, Mason, this is helpful, isn't it? Mason? Damn it. I'll never leave you. Ugh. I just want you to know that. Man, you do not realize how long 25 blocks are until you have to walk them. Okay, let's get to the bottom of this once and for all. What the hell? I know! Moved to New York? What? The show moved to New York! It did? Yeah! Oh, I thought you were talking about this! Oh. It's missing the cast page. He was the best English language obscure foreign holiday novelty songwriter in the business. Now, if that's not Mason, I'll eat my hat. Oh. That sounds kind of good. This is Mason, all right. And he's going to New York? It's one heck of an agoraphobic underground railroad. Unless it's just about Mason. But who would be able to write a play about Mason if not Mason? Produced by Kay. Kate. Kate? No, she wouldn't. Would she? Well, how do we find out? The theater's closed. I'll break the door down. Uh, hold on. There's a better option. The window! We could just ask Mason. Oh, yeah, I guess we could do that. You don't think that Mason would move to New York, do you? I'd really rather not think about it, Jennifer. And what if Mason stopped being agoraphobic? I guess he wouldn't need us anymore. Then again, is Mason's life really interesting enough to put on stage? Who wouldn't want to watch a show about an agoraphobic? Ew, it tastes like grass. It's wheat grass juice. Uh, but it tastes like grass. It is grass. Do you two realize how many accidents occur outside the home? Millions a year. I need to get inside. It was just a clever name. You thought they'd call it wheat grass to make people want to drink it? Shark attacks happen outdoors exclusively. Like how grasshopper cookies and pies are actually mint flavored? Mint. That makes way more sense. Does it? No one ever died in a car accident in their own home. That's just not true. I need to get inside. You're just upset because your wife left you and now you're all alone. No man's wife ever left him standing in the middle of the street holding an accordion while he was sitting on his sofa. Well, you can't argue with that. <sighs> Maybe we should help him. Fine, but I'm not making a habit out of this. I'll probably never see him again. I hate this accordion. Does he always complain?
complain this much? Well, Kenny, he's just having a bad day. Oh, when I get inside, I'm gonna smash his accordion with a baseball bat. Oh, good, my neighbor's psychotic. If you ever heard my wife play this thing, you'd agree with me. I'm sorry. Thanks for helping me. I really appreciate it. I'm not usually this crazy. I'll probably be fine tomorrow. Sure. Your life can't possibly fall apart every day. We'll see. So do you guys want to come inside or something? Uh, Mr. Chuckles and I were just about to have a tea party to celebrate Guy being such a hero. Indeed! No girls allowed! <laughs> He's kidding. He wants you to come in. In fact, he insists. Free tea? And oh, what a tea we had. Mr. Chuckles made a toast, honoring me for being such a hero. And that's exactly what happened that day. And I was such a hippie. It's probably better you don't remember. It got a little weird there at the end. Unlikely even, but hey, at least we're among close friends. It's very sweet of you, Mr. Mason. Don't worry, Mason, no one finds your life interesting. When I was in therapy, we used to write in a journal with our left hands and let our minds go. It's supposed to reveal your innermost thoughts. Here, I'll start. <laughs> Sounds like a bunch of garbage to me, quite frankly. No offense. Garbage? I, I do it every day. You do? Yeah. Well, you know I'm left-handed. Mace, I'm a professional. Perhaps it's best if you leave this to me. You get paid for this? No. Now, I'm making a list of the women in your life. That won't take long. Once the high-speed train gets funding, that is. There. Done. Did it reveal your innermost thoughts? Let's try something else. And I want to assure you all you're perfectly safe. I assure you I'm the best one to help you. I've helped these men. Oh, God. I miss my wife. This exercise will allow you to visualize the life that you will have once you've overcome your obstacles. It was remarkably accurate about my life. Was it? Right. You've never been to my shack. I'm going to assume that you like performance cars. Maybe I should share a story about my divorce. I thought of some good stuff. When my wife remarried, I was best man at her wedding. Is your wife remarried, Mr. Mason? Oh, you know, we don't talk much anymore because we're divorced. My ex cooks now. Can you believe that? When we were married, it took her like 10 hours to make a TV dinner. Of course, we were 13. You can only cook so fast with a 100 watt bulb. Thank you, but I think it's time we got back to Mace. Yes, it is. Pardon me. I lead this group. You lead it about as well as you coordinate your accessories. I shoes match my bag. Now, Mace, can we get serious for a minute? I have my doubts. I've prepared a powerful therapy tool, and I would like us to try it together. Fine. I suppose if it helps, it helps, right? Good. Now tell me when to stop. Oh, I can't do this anymore. I want you all to leave right now. But you're not cured. Mason, give it a chance. No, get out. I'm going to call Jennifer and tell her how you feel about her. That'll help. No, you won't. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Everyone grab an appendage. Uh we going to throw Mason outside and show him that his ex-wife can't keep him prisoner anymore. What? No! You need a breakthrough. And I'll be darned if she's going to be the cause of it. We'll see. What's Jennifer's number? 310. Um, you're right, Mason. We shouldn't call Jennifer. Uh, the person Mason really needs to talk to is his ex-wife. Hand me the phone. No, okay, wait, stop! 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 Hold on, okay? You want breakthroughs? I'll give everyone a breakthrough, and then you can all go home, and I can get on with my life. Yeah? <sighs> You're a pervert and a moron. Pinning a picture of your ex-wife to a blow-up sex doll? Use tape, idiot. Tape? And you? Is there even anyone on this thing? Hello? Nope, that's what I thought. Stop using this as an excuse to be an asshole. Try having a meaningful conversation with someone every once in a while. I'm afraid of intimacy. Not right now. Look, and I don't even know why you're here. Because I'm divorced. Yeah, and, well, I'm not sure how legal your marriage actually was. You had, like, the best divorce ever. You don't need this. But I'm divorced. Okay. And, Doug, I don't know what your problem is. You never even mentioned your divorce. My wife shot me in my sleep. Oh. Well, yeah, you probably need this. And, Guy, the problem with your divorce 
was that it was imaginary. Yet traumatizing. Look, I know that you were just trying to be here to support me. Thank you. You see, Lou, this is completely unnecessary. So my ex-wife left me, standing in the middle of the street, paralyzed with fear, holding an accordion. Big deal, that kind of stuff happens all the time. It was emotionally devastatingly crippling, and I felt like a total failure for a long time, but I don't feel that way anymore. Because over the past few years, I've learned some things. Like, it's not my fault that my wife left. And my ex-wife was a bitch. Look, I, I don't like that word, and I'm not saying it out of some latent hostility towards women. I'm saying it because it's true. She wasn't very nice to me, and I'm glad she left. Because on the day she left, I met Guy and Ashley, the two best friends I've ever had in this world. And now that my wife's gone, I get to better know Jennifer, the greatest woman I've ever been too terrified to actually tell how I feel about her. But she's gonna figure it out. Eventually. Hopefully. And who, who knew my crappy agent would stand by me when no one else would? Until she disappeared without a word. But then Lou came. And for no reason. And with no discernible skills, she's decided to help me succeed. So yeah, when my ex-wife left, it understandably left a huge hole in my life. But since then, that hole's been filled 10,000 times over by better stuff. So, I'm sorry, but I don't need the divorced men's group. I'm doing just fine without it. Then why are you stuck here? I don't know. Okay, let's throw him outside. No, 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 wait, hold on! Wait, can I get something first? What? When my wife left me, she left me with this, and I thought it would be appropriate if I had it now. You know, a circle of life and all that. I always wondered why I didn't throw it out, and I think now I know why. Yes, Mason. I think that you should have that right now. Oh, I know I should. I know I can help you. Pick a color. Mason! You're still here! Yes, I know, I know. Oh, I hope you never leave. Oh, you play too. I love the accordion. Jennifer, there's something you should know. Mason... I can handle this on my own. I was just going to say you don't actually play the accordion. Some restrictions may apply.